Hi everyone, I'm Pat from the Sewing Studio Fabric Superstore and today I'm going to instruct you on the sewing side of your brand new Brother Stellaire XJ1 sewing and embroidery machine. For this video I'm going to be using the Brother XJ1 but everything I cover here also applies to the Baby Lock Altair sewing and embroidery machine. In this video, I'm going to go over the sewing accessories that come with these machines, how to customize your sewing settings, the sewing features of these machines, and other important points to get you sewing on your Brother XJ1 or Baby Lock Altair in no time. So let's get started. So let's start your lesson at the top of the machine. So I'm going to come over to the Stellaire and I'm going to lift the lid very easily, lifts up and down. And actually, I am going to pop the top off my machine. Did you see how easily it came off? And it goes on just as easily. So right now, for right now, I'm just going to remove it. I'm going to set it to one side. And I'm going to show you your Brother Stellaire machine comes with a two-spool thread stand. And you'll notice that the little slots here accommodate your thread stand. So I have it set up already. You'll have to assemble it because it comes disassembled in your box. Assemble it, make sure that you pull your antenna all the way to the top and then just slide it in the little grooves where you pulled your um, lid off. So why would I want to use a two spool thread stand on top here? Because maybe you want to use a cone of thread that doesn't fit well down below here, or maybe you want to sew or embroider with metallic thread. Some metallic threads and decorative threads have a tendency to maybe twist a little bit. So it's nice to be able to feed them off or put them um, vertically on your spool holder instead of running it horizontally where it might twist or kink some more. Make sure that with this thread stand, that you screw the little um, thread stand in this arm and make sure that you pull it all the way up. Now I'm gonna show you the sewing accessories that come with this wonderful machine. So let's start out by looking over here at your dual feed walking foot. So I've put it on its side. So you can see on one side of this walking foot, it's got a lever. So when you want to use the dual feed walking system, you would put this down. If you want to keep the foot on your machine, but you don't want to engage the belt driven dual feed system, you can actually lift this up and it lifts that section of the foot up. So now you're not, you don't have the walking system engaged. Back here, you have the cord that you're going to plug into your machine so the machine can read that you have this um, foot on your machine. I have the plate attached. It's very easy to detach. All I did was press it forward and it dropped off. If I want to put it back on, I can just snap it back on. Okay, let's move on. So of course we get needles with the machine. We have twin needles and another package of extra needles. We get this wonderful storage box with the machine. Of course we get a foot control. If you don't want to use your start stop button, some projects you'll want your foot control. And now let's come across here, the top where I have the feet lined up. I have the J presser foot, which is your general presser foot. And you'll notice on these feet that they have letters on them. So it makes it easier to select the right foot for the project that you're doing for the stitch that you selected. So my J foot is my general presser foot. My N foot is my wider foot. Um, brother calls that a monogramming foot. I just want to tell you what the difference is between the J foot and the N foot. You can see when I turn it upside down that the N foot is wider. It's wider than my J foot. And it's also grooved out a little bit on the bottom. So when you're stitching decorative stitches, it'll ride over those stitches and not drag on them. So that's a very, I use this foot a lot. Um, so let's move on here. This is my, my overcasting foot. 
It comes with a quarter inch foot with a guide. Of course, there's an optional quarter inch foot without a guide, but with the guide is very handy to have also. And then of course you have your zipper foot. And then this is your um, buttonhole foot. The machine has many selections of buttons. And this is a one-step buttonholer. Then moving over here, I have my echo quilting foot. Now the echo quilting foot is for free motion quilting. And it actually has a shank already attached to it. Can you see that? And it's a short shank. The Brothers Stellaire is a high shank machine. So this is a short shank. So when you have a foot like this that you want to use on a high shank machine, you need your adapter. So you would actually attach this and it'll extend the shank on your machine. And you'll, there's a little screw there to attach this to your machine. And now it enables you to attach your short shank foot onto the adapter and be able to use this foot. So moving across a little bit, this is another quilting foot here. It's got a tiny little hole. That's your C foot. I also laid out here, this is my shank. This actually comes on the machine already. I took it off to be able to show it to you so you can see what a high shank that is. And then it has a little lever on the back that if you want the foot to drop off to change your feet, you would press that little lever and your foot will drop off and you can attach a new foot. It has a button fitting foot. It's very handy. You can sew buttons on and this foot holds the button for you while you sew it on. It also comes with a free motion quilting foot. Free motion is um, the letter O for open toe. Let's see what else we have here. We have a straight stitch needle plate in a separate little bag on its own. And in that bag, when you open up your machine, you'll find that you get a straight stitch foot also in there. So you would use, when, when you change your um, plate on your machine, when you change out your um, zigzag plate to a straight stitch plate, you'll notice that the difference between the plate or the cover that comes on the machine and this one is, is that this one just has a little hole. Can you see that? So the machine has a sensor in it. So when you change out the plate and you put this one on, it's not going to allow you to select any kind of zigzag stitch. It's only going to allow you to do a straight stitch center needle position. So, and then you would use this foot and you can see that the foot, the hole will line up on the hole with the plate and it'll only allow you um, to do a straight stitch. So generally you would use this foot and a little set of instructions comes in this package when maybe you're using lighter weight fabric and you want a more perfect stitch. It holds the fabric down better and doesn't allow the fabric to pull up. And you'll also notice that on the front of this side of the foot, it's got some little notches. So it's actually the quarter inch notch is marked on here if you want to use it as a guideline to the edge of your foot. That's re just a really handy little thing to have. Okay, so I also have a pair of scissors and I have a knee lift. So the knee lift attaches to the machine from the front. Um, there's actually a hole where you can put this in and engage it. And what the knee lift, lift does is that it lifts your presser foot so it enables you to be able to pivot, leaves your hands free. However, this machine does have a lift and pivot feature. So you can, you have a choice of either using your knee lift or um, the lift and pivot feature. Okay, let's move on here. I have a stylus. I always use a stylus on my screen to do my selections. I have a seam ripper. I have a chalk pencil. I have a multi-purpose screwdriver, so if you swivel it around, 
you've got different settings at which you can put the um, little screwdriver at so that you can reach all those hard to reach places. Okay, so I have an all punch. So this is a little sharp tip on the end, which you can punch holes into fabric. And then the holes on the side is where your fabric would come out. I don't know whether you can see that, but it's got a little hole on the side. I'll put it over here so you can see. Um, so I've never honestly used it, but there is a, um, a selection on the machine for you to stitch little awls. I believe it's in your buttonhole category. So there's your little punch. It comes with a different, with more screwdrivers, a little brush to clean your machine, and then another little screwdriver. This is the disc screwdriver that comes very in handy. Um, what else do we have here? Oh, I wanted to show you. You get 10 bobbins, more needles, and this little bag here brings bobbin covers, I think they're called. And I have a couple of them out here, but what they do is you can snap them. Can you see that? You can snap it onto your bobbin, and so it helps to hold your bobbin and your thread. And then, believe it or not, I can take the cover off my storage case and inside the cover, and it does show you, it shows you this in the manual, how to do this. You can actually take these and see these little like notches here. They have like a little circle. If you look at your little bobbin cover, you can slide it in. I'm just gonna set this down to show you. You can slide it on and it'll grip it. I'm gonna put it flat. This does work, I promise. Okay, so I'm gonna slide it on. And you see how it holds it? It holds it in there. So I can keep attaching. They attach to each other. So I can slide this one on here. So you can keep attaching them to each other. And so now you've got storage up in the lid of your um, storage case. The other thing that I wanted to mention to you about the storage case is when you go to put the lid down on your storage case, make sure that it says Stellaire, that's the front of your storage case. And then make sure when you go to put this down on top to lock it, that the brother is pointing in the right direction. And then you just slide it on and you can lock it. If you put the lid on the other way around, it's, you, it doesn't work as well as doing it like that. So that works perfectly. The other thing that I wanted to show you while I've got this in front of me is that we were talking about um, all the feet having letters for you to be easily able to define what foot you have. They slide in here and they have designated areas in your storage case, which is really, really nice thing to have. So now I'm gonna show you how to wind a bobbin. First of all, I'm gonna raise my spool holder on the top of the machine, and I am going to slide my spool of thread on, and you can see that it's a small, it's a Goodman spool of thread, so it's a small one. And I'm going to put on the end a spool cap. And this is important. You need to use the appropriate size of spool cap that's just a little bit larger than your spool of thread. So if I'm going to wind a bobbin with this thread, I am not going to use a large spool cap because it affects the tension. So always use the appropriate size. And the machine comes with three different sizes. So I'm going to slide this on so it holds it firmly. Now I'm going to take my thread. And you'll see that at on the top of the machine, it has a thread path. It's like a broken line that you can follow for winding your bobbin. So I'm going to take my thread and I'm going to slide it underneath this hook. And then I'm going to 
wrap it around there and you can see the diagram is here. Then I'm going to come over to my bobbin winder. So you'll notice that with these bobbins, these are class 15 bobbins, there's a little like a notch here. You want it like a little groove on the top of your bobbin. You can line that up on the notch of your um, bobbin winder. It's a little bit hard to see on camera, but when you do it yourself, you'll be able to see it. So slide your um, bobbin on there. And then I'm gonna take my thread and I'm gonna wrap it around about five times. Once you've done that, there's a little groove underneath here that can catch your thread. You can slide it in there and it catches it and it also cuts it. So now, once I've done that, I'm going to snap my bobbin winder. I'm going to engage it and you'll see that down below you heard a little ding. That means that something has popped up on my screen here. So the machine is now reading that I've engaged my bobbin winder. And so I have a new little window here. So I have a minus sign and a plus sign. This is your speed control for winding your bobbin. So if you wanted to wind a bobbin that has tricky, with tricky thread, for instance, a, maybe a monofilament or a decorative thread where you want to slow the speed down at which it winds so it doesn't stretch, you could just touch the minus sign and it'll slow it down. You touch the plus, the opposite happens. Maybe if you're winding um, thread for embroidery, it's good to wind it a little bit faster so you can speed it up. The default actually is at the center. Once you've determined that, then if you don't want to touch it, you don't have to, so you don't have to change it. Once you've determined that, you just touch start and the bobbin winder starts to work. As you can see, it's very quiet. It has a separate motor on top for winding the bobbin. So you can wind bobbins while you're embroidering. If you don't want a full bobbin, you can go ahead and stop it. And then you would come back up to the top of your machine and just do the reverse. You would just disengage, cut your thread, and you're ready to thread up your machine. So now let's thread your machine. I'm gonna raise the spool holder, slide in my spool of thread. I'm gonna use my spool cap, put it on there firmly. Hold your spool of thread. Now make sure always that your presser foot is lifted. This little button here raises and lowers your presser foot. The machine needs to be not dormant for it to work. So here's where I raise and lower. And you'll actually notice that when I lower my presser foot, there's a little window a little, like a little door here that closes down so it would be hard for you to thread this machine with the presser foot down. So I'm gonna go ahead and raise it and I'm gonna take my thread and I'm gonna come under here. It, the thread path is all numbered. I'm gonna go around, that's number two. Three is down here, four. Then I'm gonna come down, five is down here, six is the little hook above your needle. And then seven takes your thread into your guaranteed never miss automatic needle threader. So you'll see there's a little groove here and here. Okay, so I'm just gonna guide my thread in there. I'm gonna pull it back gently so it's securely in there. And then I'm gonna swipe it across my thread cutter. You see, I've cut my thread and it holds my thread. And now I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna to touch the button for the needle threader. So you see how wonderful that is? So when you're embroidering with this machine, if you have 10 different color thread changes, it doesn't matter because you can th re-thread your machine literally in five seconds. Another way of threading your machine is using your thread stand that we set up on the back here and a cone of thread. I have a cone of embroidery thread here. But first of all, if I wanted to thread it, I would need to unthread 
the thread that's already on here. And there is the right way of doing it. You need to cut your thread here. Make sure your presser foot is up so the tension isn't on there. And then come down here and pinch your thread and pull it through gently to unthread it. Okay, so if I want a cone of thread, I would bring my thread up there. And then I would use the little hook up here as a guide, the one that it snaps into when you're winding your bobbin. And then I would go ahead and come down here under that arm and proceed to thread it in with my normal threading path. If you want to use your cone of thread in a horizontal position here, what you would do is take your cone, and just wind it up a little bit, put it on your horizontal spool holder. You can lift it up, slide it through here. Let's see here, okay. And you'll see that it has, it kind of has a little bit of play here, which might affect the tension. So what you want to do before you thread it, the machine comes with this little gray cone holder. Can you see it there? And what you do is you lift up your spool holder, you slide it in, and then just jiggle it a little bit so it goes in your cone and then slide it all the way in and it kind of fills that gap in there so now your cone isn't flopping up and down and you'll get perfect tension. So now I'm going to show you how to load your bobbin case. You come over here, there's a little lever. And just pop it out. I have a wound bobbin here. And you can see that right here there's a little diagram of a bobbin with the thread coming off. It's there to show you where your thread should be coming from. So I have it coming off there. I'm going to drop it in. I'm going to gently pull it up into my tension, up the hill, down the valley, and there's a little blade in there that'll cut it. And now you can put your bobbin cover back in, just snap it in. And once your bobbin case is in and your machine is threaded, you can just start sewing or embroidering if that's the case. You do not need to bring up your bobbin thread at all. Now let's move across the front of the machine and I'll show you the features and what they do here. So this one we already use, this button. This is the guaranteed never miss automatic needle threader. So when you use this button, it will work every time unless you have moved the needle out of the highest position. So what do I mean by that? I mean that if you come over here to the hand wheel and you crank it and move your needle up or down out of the highest needle position, and then you try to use your needle threader, the needle threader is gonna come down and not find the eye of the needle. So I would recommend that you don't touch this and that you always use the button over here to the left of the needle threader that's your needle up, needle down. When you use this button, it'll drop the needle and then when you touch it again, it raises it to the highest position so your needle threader will work. So if you're not sure if your needle is at the highest position, use this button always and your needle threader will always work. Okay. So moving to the left here, I have a speed control. This is my speed control in sewing, not in embroidery. Many people think that this you can control your embroidery speed here, and you can't. The embroidery speed is controlled in your custom settings, which are housed behind here. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. So this is your speed control in sewing. So this with this machine, you can actually sew without using your foot control. You have a start stop button over here. So if I did not want to use my foot control and I wanted to use my start stop button, this is my speed control for that feature also. 
So moving over here, this is press your foot up, press your foot down. So that's nice to have. So you don't need to come to the back here to raise your presser foot. The next one is your scissors. So this is your thread cutter. And so when you select this, it pulls your top thread down and cuts your top thread and your bobbin thread at the same time. And then we get, come to needle up, needle down. And then the next button looks like a little donut almost. So this button is for locking your stitch as opposed to reversing a stitch. And we're gonna talk that, about that a little bit more in a minute. And you'll see that to the right of the little donut button or the locking stitch, there's a little light. So what that, this is kind of a dual function, this little locking stitch. It locks, but it also acts as an end of pattern um, for your decorative stitching. So in other words, if I was gonna go into my decorative stitching and select a stitch like um, a heart, I know this is decorative stitching, not embroidery, and I am stitching away a row of hearts and I want to finish my pattern, in other words, I wanna finish my last heart when I start stitching that last little heart, if I touch this button, this little green light is gonna go on and the machine will continue on its own and it will stitch and finish the pattern until the end. So it's really cool to have. If you're not, if you're not really understanding what I'm telling you, I would encourage you to go into your de decorative stitching and select and use that little button to see what it does. Remember that the way you're really gonna learn your machine is to use the buttons and see what it does and how it works. So coming down here, I have my reverse stitch. So this is for reversing and sewing when you wanna finish, um, lock your seam. And then down here, I have a button that's green right now it's my start stop button where I can sew without my foot control. Now, if you want to use this button, make sure that you disconnect your foot control if you want to use this. So now I'm gonna show you how to customize your sewing settings. We're gonna to come to the top of our screen and we're gonna open up or select what looks like a little piece of paper. The very first thing that opens up on the top here is it automatically selects the first little box here, which takes me to page number one of nine. These are my sewing settings. If I wanted to customize the machine settings, for instance, the light or the volume, I could select that. And this is specific page four to my machine settings. If I select the next one, it takes me straight to my embroidery settings. So it's kind of a shortcut to the page that you want to go to. And then the last one are your wireless settings, which is on page nine. I'm actually gonna to go to page one where the sewing settings start. So first of all, you'll see here, there's a little picture and it is this on the front of your machine, which is actually your speed control in sewing. And I've got it set at medium speed right now in the center. So if you, this by default is off and really you need to keep it off on your machine because if you were to switch this on, it converts this into a stitch width control as opposed to um, a speed control for sewing. And what that will do is that if you switch this on and you move this, you'll see that it's moving your needle to the left or to the right. So when do I use it? If I want to taper um, a zigzag stitch, because I'm doing decorative stitches and I want to taper it, I've actually selected a zigzag, turned it into more of an applique or satin stitch, and as I sewed, I very slowly move this up and down. And as I move it up and down, it um, alters the width of my satin stitch. But by default, really, you want to leave it off. If you were, 
have a little bit of time one day and you want to play with that setting and you switch it on, I would encourage you to do that just because it's nice to use everything that's built into your machine, but leave it at off. Okay, so then the next two settings are your fine adjustment vertical and your fine adjustment horizontal. So this is something that I don't, I don't think I've ever adjusted on my machine. Of course, when it's in the black box, that's your factory setting, so zero, zero. But you would use it if you're in your um, decorative stitching and you have a stitch. I'm just going to go in there so that I can give you a visual. I'm going to go to category six and there's a stitch that's built in here. I'm just going to scroll down to it, which is this one. It's category six, stitch number 59. If I was to stitch out a stitch like this and my right side of my circle was not lining up with my left, I, if it was off going um, vertically, I would adjust my um, fine adjustment vertical. And if it was not lining up horizontally, I would slightly adjust my horizontal. So this is a, a good stitch to try out your um, vertical and horizontal adjustment. But as I say, I rarely, I don't remember ever adjusting that. So you should leave it at factory setting. Okay, presser foot height, seven and a half millimeter. So this is very, very nice to have. Um, you don't have to change it. Again, your custom settings, you don't have to go in there and change everything around every time um, you want to sew a project. But I can tell you that there will be times when you're sewing on something maybe that's very thick or not so thick, and you can come in here and you can adjust it. So if you were sewing on something very bulky and you're having a hard time getting your project underneath your foot, plus means you're raising it. And so it raises my foot just a little bit and minus brings it down your foot. So once you've finished your project and you want to um, bring your machine back to factory settings, come back in here and set it back to factory setting because it will not reset itself if you switch your machine off. Okay, presser foot pressure. So the foot height adjusts your foot higher up. Your pressure is the pressure that the, the foot is bearing down on your project. So again, if you're sewing something very bulky and you just are having trouble, you feel like there's your foot is just got a lot of pressure on it, um, you can come in here and just lighten the pressure a little bit so that you have you can accommodate the bulk under your foot um, a little bit easier. So you can see it's actually on the top one on presser foot height, it's showing you a little arrow here underneath your foot. So it's lifting the height on presser foot pressure. It's showing you an arrow like the whole foot is pressing down on your project. Okay, your dual feed adjustment. I am going to show you how to use your dual feed foot. Um, and when I show that, I will show you how to adjust it. Let's go to page two. Your initial position. So we have this machine set for the initial position to be center needle, which always seems to be the most popular one. But if you want to set it for left needle position, you can do that. Okay, your initial stitch page. We have it set for utility stitches. If you're a quilter and you want the quilting stitch tab to come up as your initial stitch page, you would just select that and it would, it would come up as your initial page. Um, the multifunction foot controller, if you, that's an optional foot controller that you can purchase for this machine. When you purchase or if you purchase it and you plug it into your machine, this will window will be activated, so to speak. And then what you can do is, can you see that there's picture of two little feet? So multifunction foot controller is made up of two separate little feet. And I can actually program, in this case, my right one to do no setting at all, to cut my thread if I was to tap on the heel. It's very self-explanatory. You know, brother machines are very user-friendly. 
So I could set my big foot control that when I tap on the heel, it's going to cut my thread. And then I have options for my little foot control. So I could say, you know what, I, when I tap my left one, I want my presser foot to go up and down. And again, if you were to purchase this machine or have this machine, unless you have the foot control, this will not be on page two. It's only when you activate it and plug it in that your settings will be activated for that. Okay, let's move to page three. So this is my pivoting height. Again, this is something that's very, very nice for quilters. Um, pivoting means your needle stays down, your presser foot lifts up so that your hands are free to pivot. So if, again, I'm working on a very heavy quilt and I want my foot to lift higher when I pivot so that I'm not um, struggling with my fabric, I can adjust it to come up higher and I can do the same thing with my free motion foot height. Okay, the next setting is automatic fabric sensor system. If you purchase this machine, this comes default off. You want to switch it on because it's sensing the layers or the weight of the fabric that's underneath your foot and it's adjusting for tension. So definitely switch that on. Reinforcement priority. You know, we these settings we leave, you can see here that I've got them all on. What this does, if you switch it on, which is it's your choice, when you, I'm going to touch OK and come into my utility stitch screen. I just want to show you something. So if you were to select stitch number 104, you can see at the top of this stitch, if you look at these stitches along here, that some of them have a little dot as opposed to a little dash. So what that means is that if you were to select stitch 1-03, that that's a reinforcement stitch. In other words, that dash is telling you that it's more of a garment sewer stitch. I'm going to use my reverse reinforce, and it's going to actually stitch backwards. The one with the little dot, 104, means that that's a reinforcement stitch. So in other words, it's going to lock in place. So this is more of a quilter stitch because generally quilters don't want to reverse reinforce. They want a locking stitch. So say I select stitch number 1-04 and I want it to reinforce or lock at the end and I accidentally touch my reverse button. I hope you're all following me. So I selected a stitch that's reinforced locking stitch, but I accidentally touch my reverse. If I have this switched on, let me go to page three. If I have this switched on reinforcement priority, it's going to prioritize and lock at the end of my stitch. It's not going to reverse. So we leave it on. Okay, my guideline marker adjustment, I'm going to show in a minute um, when I show your guideline. So I'm just going to skip over that for right now. Okay, now the next one. Automatic presser foot lift. So this is something that we leave on, as you can see. This is our, our floor model, Stellaire. Air. So if I leave this on, what happens is when I when I'm sewing and I put my foot down on my presser foot, it'll automatically drop my presser foot, which is really nice. I mean, for you to be able to put your foot down on your foot control to start sewing and the machine automatically drops this foot that's on the machine. This is the reverse. When I take my foot off the foot control, it's automatically going to lift my um, presser foot off my project. So we leave that on. And then, but again, it's up to you. There may be some projects where you don't want that, so you can switch it off. The press to trim, we have it switched on. So on this machine, when you finish sewing and you and the presser foot lifts, 
If you were to cut your thread cutter, you're gonna get a message that says lower your presser foot. Your pr presser foot has to be lowered for the thread cutter to work. If you switch it on here, it'll automatic, and you touch your thread cutter, it'll automatically lower your foot back onto your project and it'll cut. So it saves you having to drop your presser foot onto your project when you're finished and you want it to cut and trim. Let's go to page four. So needle up, needle down, needle position up and down. So we have it set to needle down if you're a quilter or even if you're a garment sewer. If you want to use your lift and pivot feature, you need to have this setting down. Why? Because when you lift, use your lift and pivot, the needle needs to be down in the fabric for you to be able to pivot. It's holding your place on the fabric. So I would recommend that this setting you leave down. Needle, needle position stitch placement. This is something that I rarely use, um, but it's there, it's handy if I want to use it. We leave it switched off. What this does is you can see on the screen that there's three little needles and each one shows a different setting or placement on your fabric. So if I was to switch this on, when I use my, and I'm sewing and I want and I use my needle drop, the needle will drop halfway. It'll, it'll drop in an increment. And if I touch my needle again, it'll drop a little bit further. So it's not gonna drop and penetrate the fabric. It's gonna have different st stitch needle positions. So why would I use that? I would use it when I want the needle to drop in a specific, in a very specific place, and I wanna narrow it down. So normally your needle is in a high position, but when I activate this, it's gonna drop, and then it's gonna drop again, and it's gonna sit on top of my fabric, so I can be really precise as to where that needle is going to penetrate when I start to sew. Now, unless you, you wanna be specific on a project, we generally leave that off. Okay, your mouse pointer, pretty um, self-explanatory. I like to use a mouse with my machine and I plug it into the mouse port and you can change the little arrow. Um, your upper and bobbin thread sensor, of course you wanna know when you're running low out on um, bobbin thread, so we always leave it on. Your machine speaker volume, you can adjust that. Um, I always leave these at default. My light, you can adjust your lighting. Five is the max, but I can dim the lighting. This is a feature that I actually use sometimes. I like to sew at night, and sometimes when I'm sewing on a darker fabric, the lighting is so bright on this machine that sometimes I get like glare, especially when I'm sewing on something maybe black with black thread. Um, so sometimes when I'm sewing at night and it's dark and I have glare, I adjust my lighting down and I have five different settings and you can switch it off completely. I don't know that I ever switch it off, but I certainly dim it. Okay, the screen display brightness, that's the brightness of this screen. Um, now we get into the settings of the machine and you can see here the machine lit up. So I'll just go over this quickly. Again, you can adjust this to how you like it. You're telling the machine here to go into echo mode. You can switch it off. That's economy mode. So if you walk away from your machine a lot, you can set it to how long you want that to be. Shut off support mode. Now this is something that if you were to say, I'm gonna set this to four hours. If you leave the house, say, and you leave your machine on and you've got shut off support mode set at four hours, the machine will switch itself off after four hours. So that's something that is quite handy, actually. The screen saver. Um, 
sometimes you may be getting up and down, up and down, up and down, and your machine go keeps going to your screen saver, which could be a little annoying at times. Um, you can look at all the increments that I have. I'm telling the machine how long to wait before it goes to the screen saver. And then you can select. I'm going to take it. I'll just leave it there. Okay, your opening screen on your machine. You can select whether you want it to be the sewing or embroidery screen. Again, you don't have to change any of this. Um, you can leave these at default if you want. And now I have... Um, the last page we're going to talk about right now is my service count. This talks about your stitches, the amount of stitches. This tells you the identification number of this particular machine, and then the version for you to know if there's an update out. You can always, it's nice to keep your machine updated, and you can always check on brother.com if there is a new version to update your machine. So now let me show you the sewing section of this machine. This, what I have on right now, is my main home sewing screen. So whenever I want to come to this screen, I would touch or select my little home button, and this is my home base, so to speak, where I would select what it is I want to do, whether I want to sew, embroider, embroider Disney, or go into my design center. So right now I'm going to show you the sewing section of the machine. And you can see, first of all, that I have, I don't have the embroidery arm on and I have the storage case on for sewing and I have my sewing foot on. So I'm ready to sew. So first of all, I'm going to select and you can see too that I'm using a stylus for my screen. If you want to use your finger, you can. And you can also use a mouse. The machine does not come with a mouse, but you can select, you can certainly use um, a mouse and you would select it. You would select the second port down on the right side. Okay, so this is my main sewing screen. And you can see right away that up here, there's a tab that's selected, utility stitches. So these, these are my everyday sewing stitches. Um, and over here, it's telling me what foot to use. This is the J foot. The J foot is your everyday general presser foot. But what's nice about this is that every time I select a stitch, it's gonna tell me up here what foot to use. So I love that. So the machine is very user-friendly and it's helping you to be successful by telling you up here what it is it wants you to do. Down over here to the left of the J foot, you'll see that this machine is set to be in needle position down. When we get into the settings of the machine, you'll be able to change that if you want the needle to stop at the up position. Most common position is needle down so that you can use your lift and pivot. Okay, so let's keep traveling around here. You'll see that every stitch is numbered. This is number 123. They, they call it the single diamond overcast. So I can travel around my screen selecting all different stitches. As soon as I select it, it pulls it up here. And as I travel down here, you can see that I have a spool of thread. I can change the color that it's displaying it. It's nice to have. Do I change it every time? No, I usually leave it on black, but if you want to change the color, um, that's where you would do it. And then I have some other selections down here. So this is my automatic reverse reinforce. This is my automatic thread cut. This is my lift and pivot, which if you're a quilter or a garment sewer, it's a very, very popular button. And then this is incredibly nice to have on a machine. This is when you select this, your, lace, your little um, guide beam comes on underneath your sewing foot in the front of your sewing foot. And I am gonna go over this in a minute and show you, but I'm gonna keep traveling around here. So down here is where I would adjust my stitch width and my stitch length. So whenever you see something a number in a black box, that's the factory setting of the machine. So don't be afraid of changing it. Um, I know that sometimes 
fear kind of enters into the equation of changing the factory setting or the default setting, but you can very easily find it by just moving up and down until it goes into the regular width or length. So you can see it's very easy to adjust your length. Um, the left right shift is also very nice to have. So what this does is that it actually moves your stitching. Can you see here on my preview window, so to speak, that as I'm moving this, it's moving my stitching either over to the right or to the left. So rather than having to reposition my fabric underneath my foot, I can put my, my project underneath my foot, put my presser foot down and adjust by shifting my um, stitch to the right or to the left. I have to say that this feature is one that I use a lot. Um, as I go through showing you, I'm gonna tell you which ones I, I like a lot, which ones I use a lot, and which ones um, maybe you may not use as much. Now, as we travel through here, you can see that I can actually grab it or I can use my arrow up and arrow down to travel through my stitches. I can also, moving over to this side of the screen, you can see that I'm on tab number one. That's what's selected. That's my utility stitches. But as I go down here, number two, number three are heirloom and quilting stitches. Number four is where my darning stitches are um, and all my buttonholes. Number five, this is, really, this is really a cool feature. And honestly, you should try it um, when you feel like playing with your machine this machine sews sideways. So if you need to um, stitch a patch on a leg of a pair of jeans, you could actually slide the leg of your jeans onto your free arm of your machine and put the patch on there. And instead of having to turn your leg every time, which would be very difficult, you can actually change the direction of the sewing. In other words, you can sew up and then you can sew down and you can sew sideways to the right and sideways to the left. I actually use this feature quite a bit when I'm stitching, um, making my tote bags. At the end of the webbing, when I stitch my webbing onto my bag, I like to stitch that little, like a square and then a cross inside it to reinforce it and I use this feature a lot. So it's, it's very nice and I would encourage you to play with this and use it. Okay, so the last category down here, there's a cue on there. These are your quilting stitches. So for those of you who are quilters, all of these, lots of nice little blanket stitches. This little stitch, the Q12, is one of my favorites for applique. It's just a really delicate little stitch and again, you can see that the preset settings for it width is 2.0 and length is 2.0, but I can always adjust it. And by the way, if you have, if you're working on a quilt and you are coming back again tomorrow to keep working on it and you want to save the settings that you have set on the machine because maybe you've changed both of them, you can actually just select memory and now it's saved to the memory of the machine. So all you need to do is remember that you used stitch Q12. And when you come back tomorrow and you select Q12, your settings are gonna be saved. You can also reset. Reset means reset it back to the factory setting. And you can also retrieve it here. So let's keep moving down here. So I'm actually gonna go back up to tab number one, which is my everyday utility stitches, so to speak. So if I wanted to free motion a quilt, 
I could select this and this drops my feed dogs. And as soon as I select that, did you hear that click? Feed dogs are dropped and it's telling me here, use your O foot. If I want to deselect it, I would just touch it again and the feed dogs would come up. This one here, mirror images. So say I had a blanket stitch and I wanted to mirror image it. I could select that. Um, that's nice to have. The next one is your twin needle setting. So you can see that it's grayed out. It's grayed out because the machine is not allowing you to do this stitch with a twin needle to stitch it out. Now, I'm just gonna move around a little bit. Now, can you see when I just selected a zigzag that now I have the option of selecting a twin needle. So when I touch it on my screen, it shows me twin needle. I think that's kind of cool. So when I deselect it, it goes back to a single stitch. This little selection here, you can see that it's showing a needle at the beginning of a pattern. So say you are stitching um, this stitch, something that kind of has a beginning and an end. When you stop sewing and you want to start again with that pattern, so to speak, we'll, we'll call that stitch a pattern. When you touch this, it takes you back to the beginning of that pattern. This feature doesn't necessarily lend itself to utility stitches, but when you're sewing decorative stitches and you're sewing a series of little hearts and you finish the last heart that you stitched maybe was a half a heart, and now you want to start at the beginning again, you would select this and it would start at the beginning of the pattern. Okay, let's keep traveling down here. This little button here is either continuous stars or one star. So it doesn't really mean anything with this stitch. What it's doing is just taking one of the patterns. Um, I'm going to show it to you maybe with this one. So I'm, I've come into the heirloom stitches and there's actually maybe a little scallop. Here we go. I'm going to select a little scallop and I'm going to come here and select one. And what it's done is that it's taken one of those scallops and put it up there and it'll just stitch that out and it'll stop. So three stars is continuous sewing. One star is one pattern from that selection. Okay, so let's move around here a little bit more. I want to show you something that's really cool. Um, first of all, I'm, I'm in the buttonholes. So what I want to do is I'm going to select a buttonhole. I'm going to select buttonhole 4-03. And it tells me up here, it's a tapered round-ended buttonhole. Now you may look at this machine and think, oh my gosh, when would I use all of these buttonholes? I didn't know there, there could be so many buttonholes and when would I use them? So what you can do is select one and you can come up here. Can you see at the top of my screen here, there's a question mark. So I'm going to touch that and this is where there's a lot of information built in for this machine. So I'm going to come down here and again, come in here, venture in here and touch these buttons because this is all explanation and help to guide you with this machine. But at this point, what I want the machine to do for me is to explain the pattern to me. So I'm going to select this and look at what it does. 403, tapered round-ended buttonhole, use, reinforced waist tapered buttonhole. So the machine is telling me you would use this buttonhole where, you, where maybe there's some stress because it's a very strong buttonhole and it's tapered. So that says to me that I would probably use it on a waistband on a pair of pants. So what this does, you can actually adjust the width and the length here if you want, and it saves it. But what that does 
is that it adds value to every stitch and every buttonhole that's here because the machine is explaining it to you as you go. Now I'm going to show you how to use these three buttons on the front of your utility stitch or your sewing page. So I'm going to go ahead and select automatic trim. When you select that, the reverse reinforce also gets selected. And then this little selector here is your lift and pivot. So whether you're a quilter, an applicator, or just a sewer, this feature is very, very nice. So now let's come over here. I do not have my foot control plugged in, so I'm gonna use my start stop button. So I'm gonna go ahead and press start, and you'll notice that my foot drops right away, and it reinforces right away because I selected that on the screen. Now when I select stop, my foot lifts off my fabric and my hands are free to pivot. So remember, we talked about this when we were in the settings that if you want to use your lift and pivot, make sure your settings are that your needle is down. Okay, so I can pivot, then I would press start again. If I have my foot control plugged in, I would just be using my foot control. So I can touch that again, pivot again, press start again. So now, let me do a little turn here. So if I get to the point where I'm at the end of my seam or at the end of my, my sewing and I want to let the machine know, okay, I'm done, this is what I would do. I would press start or put my foot down on the foot control and then instead of pressing stop, I would just touch that. And you can see that the machine automatically reversed or reinforced, depending on what stitch you've got selected, and cut the thread, lifted the presser foot, and my project is done. And that's what selecting those three buttons on the front of the screen does for you. It's a, it's a really, really nice feature on this machine. So now let's take a look at the decorative stitching in this machine. If you look at the top of the screen here, next to utility stitches, I've got character and decorative stitching. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that. And the machine asked me, is it okay to cancel the current stitch selection? It's asking me that because maybe I brushed it accidentally and I didn't mean to. So I'm gonna say, okay, because I do wanna switch over. And so now this tab up here is highlighted. Now look at all these different categories of decorative stitching that I have here, plus lettering in case I wanted to maybe um, stitch out some labels for a quilt or I would like to stitch on a ribbon, but we'll get to that in one second. So the first category I'm gonna open up are my decorative stitching, category number six. You can see right away that I've got a bar here on the side where I can scan down and take a look, a lot of beautiful decorative stitching. I know that a lot of people um, have decorative stitching on their machines and tend not to use them. I personally love using them um, on my tote bag, so I'm fascinated by them. So I like a lot of decorative stitching. And on this machine, I can also create my own decorative stitching by um, merging patterns together to create my own. So as you can see, lots of them. So let's pick one for the fun of it. Let's see, let me go ahead and select that one. Look at how beautiful that is. Tells me right away to use foot N as opposed to the J foot. The N foot is a wider foot for decorative stitching and it's also grooved out on the bottom. Um, and we're gonna talk about that when we talk about the accessories, but it's grooved out on the bottom so that as it stitches your decorative stitching, it's riding over and not dragging as it leaves them behind. So beautiful. Now over here, I have my selections for editing, so to speak. Now I have the option to drop my feed dogs. I never, ever, ever would drop my feed dogs on something like this. So please don't drop your feed dogs with this decorative stitch. Okay, 
So here is that button that I was explaining before in utility stitches where it has the needle in front of a pattern. And this is a good example. If I had stitched this design and I had left it half stitched and then I wanted to start stitching on the next side of my project and I would want it to start back at the beginning, I would select this and it would automatically start stitching at the beginning of my pattern again. So these are, some of them are repetitive to what I showed you before. If you're not sure how some of these buttons work, just touch them and you'll see what it does. So this one is one pattern and one pattern is one of these set of leaves on either side. So you can select it and deselect it. This mirror images it very um, self-explanatory and this one mirror images horizontally. When you have large and small, you have the option of selecting large or small. Not all the stitches have these editing features, um, but they're nice when they pop up, so to speak. If I want to delete it, I can delete it there. Um, I'm going to keep going through and show you some more things. These, these stitches here, I would encourage you on category number six, as you get to the bottom, for instance, stitch number six, 273 is a beautiful stitch. When I was in the utility stitches, I mentioned to you that this machine stitches sideways. It has a feature where the um, feed dogs will feed your fabric sideways. And in your decorative stitching, and this is one of them, that feature kicks in and stitches out a very wide stitch. So all of these down here in this category are very wide stitches and your lateral feed system will kick in and move your fabric sideways. So again, try stitching out some of these stitches. Let's keep going through lots and lots of nice stitches. And then if I want to go back to my main character and decorative stitching, I can select my tab again and it asks me, is it okay to cancel? I'm gonna say okay. And it brings me back to this screen. So behind all of these, more stitches, when you select one, pops up. Now let me show you something that's creative and fun. I'm gonna go back to my decorative stitching and I'm gonna go back into category six, and I'm just gonna scroll through and go page by page here. Let's see here. I am looking for this really fun little stitch. It's a snowflake, because I want to create my own decorative stitching. So I went past it. I'm gonna just backtrack a little bit. So many pretty stitches. And where is it? Okay, so here it is. So stitch number six dash 110. I'm gonna select it, you see how pretty that is? And I'm going to select one. And I am going to select, you see this plus sign up here? I'm gonna to touch that and now you can see that it looks selected, it's darker. And now I am going to add this was stitch 6110. I'm going to touch 6 109. And you can see that I am creating my own decorative stitching. So I could keep adding if I wanted different sections. Say I wanted one of these, I could add that. Now I'm going to come down here and you see these arrows left and right. I have to select plus first which I know is selected. And then this adds a little stitch to the right. I'm gonna to touch it again. So that's two stitches, three stitches. And then I can go ahead and select this again. Can you see? It downsized it a little bit so it can do what I want, but I am creating my own decorative stitching. 
and I still have this selected at one star. Now, I could, I could have fun with this and keep going. If I wanted to add to the left, I could select left, left, and you can see it's adding stitches to the left, and I could keep adding. And now, if I come back up here and I select continuous star, it'll do it continuous. So I hope you can see that on the screen here. Um, actually, I've got a little window here. See how I opened that up? This is the stitch that I just created. And I can magnify it here and demagnify it. So this is where I went in so that I could check. So kind of fun. So this sways. These add a stitch to the left. And if you touch it three times, three stitches to the left, and then it'll continue to add on. This adds on to the right. So you can have a lot of fun creating your own decorative stitching. Now, you may also, I'm gonna go ahead and delete this. Just delete everything. I wanna give you another idea for using decorative stitching. You see how it traces back. You may have a quilt that you only wanna add a little bit of decorative stitching to. If you select the snowflake and you select just one, you could scatter little snowflakes all over a little project. Maybe you're working on doll clothes or maybe um, on a little quilt. So it's a nice way of being able, actually looking at this, you could use it as a little eye. Um, if you're working on a Christmas project, you could have that as the eye of a snowman or whatever. So lots of different ways that you can use your decorative stitching for you to be creative. So now I'm going to show you how to use the memory and the memory pockets on your machine. And I'm going to start in the utility stitch section. So I'm actually in my quilting categories here. So say I do a lot of applique. I stitch a lot of applique. And I would like to save a variety of applique widths and lengths that are my favorite settings. So there's a couple of ways of doing this. So first of all, I selected stitch Q09, which is um, a zigzag stitch. And I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna adjust my width maybe. I wanna make it a little bit narrower and I wanna shorten my stitch length. And as you can see on my screen, the change is happening. Okay, so I would select memory here. So now if I wanted to do some straight stitching and come up to a piecing stitch, I could select that. And now later on in the day, I wanna come back and do some more of my applique. I could just select Q09 and it's gonna come up with the settings of the, that I just saved, right? Okay, so that's one way of doing it and you're saving one setting. If, I'm gonna actually reset this, if I wanted to save a variety of settings on that one stitch, I could, I could adjust it, say memory, and then I could make another adjustment. So this machine can save, has five memory pockets per stitch, not in total, five memory pockets per stitch. So I'm gonna save another let me make it a little bit um, shorter here. Maybe I want to do a satin stitch. I'm going to save it to memory. And then we're going to save three different settings. So I keep adjusting my stitch width and my stitch length memory. Okay. So I've saved three different settings for the one stitch. Now say I select another stitch and now I want to go back and select one of the blanket stitches that I saved. So I would select Q09 and select retrieve. And here are all my different settings that I saved on that one particular stitch. So if I want to do stitch number one, the, um, with that width and that length, the first one that I saved, I'm going to select it and I'm gonna say retrieve it and it retrieves it. If I want 
once I'm done, if I want to delete it, I can go back to retrieve and I have delete down here. So I could select the one stitch that maybe I'm done with and I don't want to save those settings anymore. I could delete each one individually or I could delete all of them. And then of course I have the retrieve if I want to retrieve a particular one to continue with my project. So really a very cool feature to make sewing and um, quilting much easier for you. So now I'm going to show you how to use your memory pocket in your character and decorative stitching. So I selected the tab that says character and decorative stitching and it asked me, is it okay to cancel the current stitch selection? It's asking me if I want to delete that and I'm going to say okay because I want to travel into my decorative stitching. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and select category number six and I can come down here now some of these remember that in your decorative stitching for a lot of the stitches you cannot adjust your stitch width or your stitch length so when it's grayed out when you have little lines like this across it the machine is not letting you adjust it so what I want to do right now is I want to select a stitch that I can adjust and save the settings on so I went, I went into my category nine, which are my satin stitches, and I can select, I selected 9-06, it's very pretty. And you can see here now my width and my length have lit up. Also my left right shift, so I could shift it over either to the left or to the right. And I also have a tension setting that I can adjust. So say I wanna adjust my stitch width down, and I wanna adjust my stitch length down. You can see that the machine is working as I do it. And I wanna maybe move it over to the right a little bit, and I can also adjust my tension if I want. Okay, so now I'm gonna save this to my memory pocket, and this screen comes up. The machine, the USB, or the USB with the, that picture is of a mouse. So I normally, if I save to my USB stick, I always use this and I use my, I put my USB stick in the top port as opposed to the bottom one. But in this case, I wanna save it to the memory pocket of the machine. So now if I like, I could travel to another stitch. This one is allowing me also to do that. I can save it to the memory. Okay, so now say I, I'm embroidering other, I go to other stitches and I want to come back and pull the ones that I saved from my memory pocket. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select character and decorative stitching and this is my home screen so to speak for my decorative stitching and down here you can see that there's a pocket with an arrow out. So I am going to select that and here are my two stitches that I saved. So this was my first one and this was my second one. So all I need to do is touch it and it pulls it up. Now, if I, wanna, if I wanted to delete that stitch, there's a little garbage can here. So I could touch that and it would delete it out of the memory. But what I wanna do in this case is pull it out of the pocket. So you always pocket with the arrow out means I want to pull it out and I want to use it. And you'll see it pulls it up on my screen with the different settings, my custom settings that I really like on that stitch. So now I am ready. Just going back here, I want to show you how to pull out the other one. I am ready to sew. Now I have a quilter's tip for you. I am going to go to my quilters category. Remember the last category, the last tab down here with a Q are my quilting stitches. So I've got it selected. And one of the questions that we get asked the most is, how do I do a quarter inch on this machine? So select Q03 or Q02. I'm gonna select Q03 in this case. And remember to go up here at the top of your screen, there's a little question mark. So go up here and say pattern explanation. In other words, explain that pattern to me. So I'm going to select it 
And right away, it tells me for Q03 to use my J foot and what the use is, piecework and patchwork, quarter inch left seam allowance. So there's your answer. Use your J foot and it's going to give you a quarter inch from the left of your J foot for your quarter inch allowance. So now I'm going to show you the guideline marker that comes on this machine. And it's this little button here. I'm on my utility stitch page. I have stitch number 1-03, which is my center needle position. So I have that selected. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to select my guideline marker. It comes up at 3.5 millimeter. This machine has a seven millimeter wide bite, so to speak, or the widest satin stitch is seven millimeter. So 3.5 millimeter is the center. And I'm going to, you have the ability to be able to use your, or move your guideline marker line to the right or to the left. And you can see what's happening here on my screen. Because I've got my machine on center needle position, when I get to 3.5, it lines it up exactly. So I have options of where I can use my guideline marker. If I wanted to stitch in the ditch, which I do a lot of with my guideline marker, I like to use decorative stitching, um, stitching in the ditch. So I would line them up one on top of the other. So when you come over to your project over here, you can see that I've marked with a pencil my seam here. And you can see that now that I have that guideline marker se selected, I have a red light, which helps me tremendously to sew and, and be successful. So I've lined my needle up. I've got center needle position. So now I could press start and I've got it sewing slow. I also dimmed my lights in, when I was talking to you about custom settings, I talked to you about the lighting. So I dimmed my light so that I can see my guideline marker better. So I'm just gonna go ahead and stop my machine and you can see how precise I am. I lined it up perfectly. Anybody who uses this guideline marker loves it, especially for quilting. Okay, so where else could you use it? If you wanted to, you can move this. So if I wanted to move it over to the right, and instead of stitching on the line, I could use it as a guideline over here and run it down the edge of my fabric. So it's up to you how you want to use it. You've got many positions that you can put it at um, to help you to be more successful. Now, there's another little setting here. So this moves it from left to right. And I'm just gonna put it back in the center, just 3.5, okay. Um, actually, let me move it over to the left a little bit to show you this. When I touch this, all that does is that it flips your guideline over to the opposite size, side in the same increment of what it was from here to the left. Now it's the same distance from here to the right. So it shifts it. Now, when I was talking about customizing the settings for sewing, I told you that I would come back to this when I showed you this guideline marker. If I go to page three of my nine pages, I have a guideline marker adjustment. So if for some reason your machine isn't lining up the line exactly on top or underneath, um, you can come in here and adjust it slightly to the left or to the right. And actually, this is quite useful if you were to be um, wanting to stitch on something maybe on a quilt where it's not a flat surface and you want to align, it's not looking exactly right because your surface isn't flat. 
because you've got batting underneath. You can actually come in here and customize it so that it is working or lining up exactly with your stitching. You can also adjust your guideline marker brightness. So once you've done that and you've set it where you want it, default is zero, but we had adjusted it a little bit. You can just touch OK and then touch OK. Whenever you want to close a screen out or you've opened a screen, you always need to close to come back to your original setting. So that's the little guideline marker. Very, very useful. So now I'm going to show you how the machine has the ability to sew sideways. I came into my utility stitches. I selected category number five and you can see the arrows are pointing from side to side. So when you select that, this window opens up. I selected stitch 5-07 and the arrow shows it pointing down. So in other words, it's going to stitch down. Now you can see up here, the machine tells me that I need to put my N foot on, which I already have on my machine. And I'm actually going to select the little marker guideline again. So you can see here, I'm just going to move it over to show you how this works again. I'm going to line it up with my line of stitching. So now when you come over here, you can see that under the needle, I have a piece of fabric with a square I drew on there. So this could be a patch or it could be the tip of your webbing if you were wanting to sew a square and on a tote bag on the webbing to finish it off. So I've lined up my guideline marker with my stitching line and now I am going to press start. And I have selected for the machine to sew slowly while I'm doing this demonstration. So I'm watching and when it gets to the corner, I'm going to press stop. And instead of having to pivot my fabric, all I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to my screen and I want it to sew to the left. So I'm going to select stitch 5-04. I'm going to go ahead and switch my guideline marker off put my presser foot down and it's going to sew to the left. I'm going to speed it up just a little bit, a little bit more. And when it lines up, you can see I've stitched that. I don't have to pivot. I am going to come back to my screen and I want to find 502 is going to stitch up. So select 502, press start. And it's sewn up. And now I want to sew back to the right, back to my starting point. So I'm going to select stitch 5 05 and I'm going to press start again. And when I get back to my starting point, I can reinforce if I like. I'm just going to cut my thread. And you can see that without even pivoting my fabric, I have successfully sewn a square. So now I'm going to show you the walking foot that comes with your machine. As, as you can see, I've got it sitting here on the bed of the machine, and it's a very large walking foot, it really is a fabulous thing to have with this machine for those of you who are quilters. So you can see that when you take it out of the box, it does not have a sole plate or a foot attached to it. This is called the little sole that comes with it. So what you would do, first of all, is attach it and it attaches very easily. All you need to do is snap it. You can hear the click. All you need to do is snap it in. There are additional soles that you can purchase for your wonderful big walking foot. And I wanted to show you, I already took off my shank to attach this foot. You have to remove the shank off the machine and I have the end um, foot attached to it. So I've removed that and I used, you'll find this in your little accessory box, 
This is your little screwdriver and it has different settings. You can actually swivel it out. And so it's a nice little screwdriver to have to detach um, your shank. So let me move this out of the way and I'm gonna attach this. So you need to bring this behind, you need to loosen your screw and you're gonna place this opening here between the screw and the shank that's left. So you may have to loosen your screw a little bit more. If you like, you can remove it or you can slide it on. I'm just gonna screw it on. As you can see, this little screwdriver is short and handy to be able to get in underneath. It's less cumbersome. So I had loosened it quite a bit. So this walking foot is actually what they call belt driven and tighten it up. I got it on there good, but I want to make sure it's nice and tight. It's actually belt driven. When you take a look at it, you'll see underneath there that it has a belt. You can also see that I had to loosen it quite a bit for me to be able to attach this foot. Okay. So I've got it on there nice and tight. Um, the next thing I'm going to do once I've screwed it on at the shank is I'm going to come behind and you'll notice it had a cable. It has a cable and I, with a little plug and I am going to plug. I'm just going to stand up one minute. There's a little port on the back of the machine for you to plug it in. So when you plug it into the machine, the machine is reading now that this foot is attached and obviously you want it to do that and because it knows this walking foot is on what i've done now is that i've come into my settings here so on page one of my custom sewing settings you can see here this is my dual feed feed adjustment so when i attached um, the foot to the machine through with the port, the machine is now reading that I have the dual feed foot on. So over here, you can see I have a plus or a minus. So when I put my fabric underneath my foot and I sew, I'm gonna sew a little bit here. You're gonna do a test and if your fabric, if your top fabric is longer, what you're going to do, in other words, it's not lining up your top with your bottom, you're going to adjust your, your feeding system, your belt driven feeding system. And when you go towards the plus, the belt goes faster. So it'll pick up it, it won't feed and um, feed off the fabric. In other words, your top won't be longer than your bottom. If the opposite was to happen, if your top fabric comes up short and it hasn't fed exactly the same, you would go in the opposite direction. You would go towards the negative. So the plus, the belt is feeding much faster and so it would even out your edges. So now I'm gonna show you how easy it is to do free motion quilting on this machine. First thing I'm gonna do is select a straight stitch center needle. And now I'm gonna come over here to the top right corner and I'm gonna select this little button. And what that does is that it drops my feed dogs. And you can see that as soon as I selected that over here, it's telling me to use my open, open toe foot for free motion quilting with an O. That's the letter that um, designates that foot. So now what I'm gonna do, I have some fabric with batting underneath my foot. I'm just gonna go ahead. I'm not using my foot control. I'm using my start stop button. You can see that right away, My foot dropped when I pressed start. 
And see how easily I did that. And I'm not really a free motion quilter, but I've got my speed control set at half speed. Because again, I'm not, I'm using my start stop button. You can see how easy it is to have fun doing free motion. I hope you enjoyed this instructional video on the sewing side of the Brother Stellar XJ1 and Baby Lock Altair sewing and embroidery machines. If you have any questions, please be sure to stop by our store or give us a call. You can also comment below. We're here to help you get the most out of your machines. These machines are available in store only, so we hope to see you soon. Thanks for watching and happy sewing.